This video is about Queen Elizabeth, the first of England, who used skin whitening chemicals to conceal her very own natural dark complexion. The Universal Center for Renovation presents historical and biblical Israelites. This video is strictly for educational purposes and for commentary. This video is of biblical and secular historical literature, so enjoy. Don't stare at me because I am dark. The sun has darkened my skin. My brothers were angry with me. They forced me to care for their vineyards so I couldn't care for myself, my own vineyard. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. And Queen Elizabeth I of England used skin whitening chemicals. To the right, there's a famous picture of Queen Elizabeth I of England. This is a famous painting. This painting was made to celebrate the great victory of the English Navy over the Spanish Navy. The Spanish Empire sent an invading Navy to invade England and lost. This changed the course of English history forever. After this battle, the Battle of the Spanish Armada, England became the dominant European nation in the world. In this painting, as we can see, Queen Elizabeth has a very pale complexion. But this pale complexion came from chemicals to bleach and whiten Queen Elizabeth's naturally dark complexion. As we shall find out later in this video, these chemicals had an adverse effect on the health of the queen. There were toxic chemicals. After 1453, when a Turkish Ottoman Muslim Empire took the eastern part of the Roman Empire, also known as the Byzantine Empire, and when the Christians of Europe regained Spain in 1492 when Granada was taken. Anyone with Moorish or Jewish blood was villainized. And the outward appearance of having Moorish or Jewish blood in Europe was Having a dark complexion and woolly hair. Unfortunately for the kings and queens of Europe and the aristocracy, they not only carried Jewish blood and Moorish blood, they had Israelite ancestry. And along with that came dark complexion of skin tone. And the elites of Europe were some of the wealthiest people in the world, so they could afford the chemicals that were needed to conceal their hidden Israelite ancestry. So once they were able to lighten and bleach their skin tone, 
Living in countries where the majority of people had very light skin complexions, it was back to business or business as usual. Or so these wealthy elites of Europe thought. Because these chemicals had toxic effects on their health. Racism and colorism can and did have a negative effect even on the people on the top of the pyramid. So rather you are light complexion or dark complexion, human perception can have and does lead to very negative qualities of life depending on where you live and who you are surrounded by. The picture to the bottom right shows positive qualities of skin whitening treatments, reduces dark spots, evens out the skin tone, improves self-confidence, glorifies your makeup, and saves cost, reduces the acne scars, gives easy results. Skin whitening. Skin whitening, also known as skin lightening and skin bleaching, is the practice of using chemical substances in an attempt to lighten the skin or provide an even skin color by reducing the melanin concentration in the skin. Several chemicals have been shown to be effective in skin whitening. While some have proven to be toxic or have questionable safety profiles, this includes mercury compounds, which may cause neurological problems and kidney problems. In a number of African countries, between 25 and 80% of women regularly use skin whitening products. In Asia, this number is around 40%. In India, specifically over half of the skin care products are sold to whiten skin. In Pakistan, where skin lightening products are popular, humans have been found to contain toxic levels of hydroquinone and mercury. The image to the left, the photograph, shows the results of skin bleaching or skin whitening treatments. It can turn a person of darker complexion or give a darker skin complexion person a lighter skin tone from darker complexion to light skin tone. The image on the right is the advertisement that gives a European woman or a woman with a European phenotype but who has dark skin. It can change her complexion to the image on the right where her skin is bleached or whitened. The image of her on the left is her skin with a darker tone. The image on the right is her skin with a lighter tone. A woman's face is her fortune. Dr. Sims arsenic complexion wafers. After a few days use will permanently remove all blotches moles, pimples, and freckles, producing an entrancing, beautiful complexion that shames the use of powders and creams 
warranted it, perfectly harmless. Sold by all leading druggists at one dollar per box of 100 wafers. Dr. Sims' safe periodical wafers are pure and reliable for all females' irregularities. Price two dollars per box. Sent by mail, secure, on receipt of price. Thumbler and Company. So, as we can clearly see, this product was sought after by women with European phenotypes, where the image to the left, a dark or black complexion, can be turned to the image of her new transformed face to a light and clear complexion simply by bleaching the skin or whitening the skin. This was used and sought after from Europeans who had darker skin complexions. And these Europeans were people who had Jewish or Moorish ancestry or Israelite ancestry. And people with these darker complexions in Europe was from England, Ireland, Britain, Scotland, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Poland, Russia, and every country in Europe. From dark complexion to a light complexion using chemicals. So let's continue with the Wikipedia article, Skin Whitening. Motivations. Historian Evelyn Nakano Glenn attributes sensitivities to skin tone among African Americans to the history of slavery. Lighter skinned African Americans were perceived to be more intelligent and skilled than dark-skinned African Americans who were regulated to more physical, taxing, manual labor. Well, that can be completely possibly true because the aristocrats of Europe were the most educated members of society. So their motivation for enlightening their skins were different. It was based on political factors. And this affected so-called African-Americans also. Political and social factors. Studies have additionally linked paler skin to achieving various forms of social standing and mobility. A study of Kelly Lewis and her colleagues found that in Tanzania, Residents chose to bleach their skin to appear more European and impress peers and potential partners. Both advertisements and consumers have suggested that whiter skin can enhance individual sexual attractiveness. Sociologist Margaret Hunter noted the influence of mass marketing and celebrity culture emphasizes whiteness as an ideal of beauty. A study of Natisha Nagar also revealed that lighter skin tones in both men and women in India improved their prospects for marriage. Skin whitening is common throughout Asia. In South Korea, light skin is considered an ideal beauty. And most South Koreans believe that having paler skin it's the only way to look beautiful. In South Korea, skin whitening is a multi-billion dollar industry. The K-pop and K-drama industries are saturated with fair-skinned celebrities, some of whom serve as brand ambassadors and beauty ideals. The increasing popularity of K-pop and K-beauty has driven the skin whitening trend elsewhere in Asia, especially in poorer countries like Thailand, 
where many have begun to use unsafe skin retaining products in a power cultural influence from Bollywood, which prominently features lighter skin lead actors, has been linked to the use of skin whitening creams among some darker skinned men. History Early skin whitening practices were not well documented. Skin whitening is a practice that has made its way across the entire globe with a multitude of cultures adapting the practice under various ideologies. Commonly, the practice has been marketed towards women under the pretense that porcelain skin was the ideal representation of beauty and status. The first recorded practice of skin whitening can be traced back to over 200 BC across a multitude of civilizations that utilize natural sources of ingredients to facilitate the production of skin whitening substances. For example, one of these methods included the use of honey and olive oil as a method of whitening the skin in different civilizations, such as in Egypt, as well as in Greek culture. According to anthropologist Nina Jablonski, these practices did not become publicized until famous figures such as Cleopatra and Queen Elizabeth began to use them regularly. Queen Elizabeth, the first of England. Queen Elizabeth, the first of England, used skin whitening or skin bleaching treatments or chemicals. According to anthropologist Nina Jablonski, these practices did not become publicized into famous figures such as Cleopatra and Queen Elizabeth began to use them regularly. A modern portrait. The modern portrait of Elizabeth I of England is the name of any of three surviving versions of an allegorical panel painting depicting the Tudor Queen or the Tudor Dynasty Queen surrounded by symbols of royal majesty against a backdrop representing the defeat of the Spanish Armada in 1588 or the Spanish Navy in 1588. This is a life-size portrait of Elizabeth I of England. Jews or Israelites have been in England since the time of the Roman Empire and even before. The early Jews and Muslims of England and Wales. A Genetic and Genealogical History by Elizabeth Caldwell Hirschman and Donald N. Yates. This book proposes that Jews were present in England in substantial numbers from the Roman conquest forward. Indeed, there has never been a time during which a large Jewish descended and later Muslim descended population has been absent from England. Contrary to popular history, the Jewish population was not expelled from England in 1290, but rather adopted the public face of Christianity. 
while continuing to practice Judaism in secret. Crypto Jews and crypto Muslims held the highest offices in the land, including service as archbishops, dukes, earls, kings, and queens. Among those proposed to be of Jewish ancestry are the Tudor kings and queens, Queen Elizabeth I, William the Conqueror, and Thomas Cromwell. Documentation in support of this revisionist history includes DNA studies, genealogies, church records, place names, and the Doomsday Book. So Queen Elizabeth I was a Jew and Israelite. The Tudor dynasty were descendants of Israelites in England, kings and queens of England. Since there are records that exist proving that Jews lived in England since the Roman Empire, let's show images of Jews and Israelites of the first century Roman Empire. Denver Europa Synagogue. This synagogue existed during the time of the Roman Empire. Here was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. This is from the book, The Black Presence, The Lens of the Bible, page 15. And from the term black and skin color, I'm quite sure the author meant dark brown or chocolate brown. There is this no people who actually have black skin complexions. It's dark brown, but it's known today as black. But it's actually dark brown. A diptych. A diptych is a painting, especially an altarpiece, on two inch wood panels, which may be closed like a book. A diptych depicting the arrival of Queen Elizabeth I, 1530 to 1603, at Tilbury, England, the defeat of the Spanish Armada.
Jews were present in England in substantial numbers from the Roman conquest forward. Indeed, there has never been a time during which a large Jewish descended and later Muslim descended population has been absent from England. Contrary to popular history, the Jewish population was not expelled from England in 1290, but rather adopted the public face of Christianity while continuing to practice Judaism in secret. Crypto Jews and crypto Muslims held the highest offices in the land, including service as archbishops, dukes, earls, kings, and queens. Among those proposed to be of Jewish ancestry are the Tudor kings and queens, including Queen Elizabeth first. As we can see, the Tudor dynasty and court, their members were of Jewish or Israelite ancestry. And these men and women were dark, complexioned, and swarthy. Queen Elizabeth I of England was a woman of dark complexion who used chemicals to bleach and whiten her face and complexion. The life of Elizabeth I, a book by Wilson Weir. Elizabeth was 25 years old at her accession to the throne of England. She was tall and very slender, with a tiny waist, small bosom, and beautiful long fingered hands, which it pleased her vanity to display to advantage in a variety of affected poses. She had a Swabby olive complexion, like that of her mother. Although she made a habit of whitening it with a lotion made up of egg whites, powdered egg shell, poppy seeds, borax, and alum, which made her face appear white and luminous. She had inherited also Anne Boland's long, thin face, high cheekbones, and pointed chin. From her father, she had her red, naturally curly hair and high hooked nose. Swathi, etymology, English, alteration of swati from swat plus t or t sound. From Old English, swat, black. Swathi, twani, dusky, dark, dark skinned, black. Darker skin than white, but lighter skin than 20, 10. 
dark skinned, black, dusky, sable, sooty, dark skinned, swabby. Online Etymology Dictionary Swabby Dark Colored Twenty Especially in Reference to Skin Old English Swat Black Being of a Dark Hue Dark Colored Black the native Germanic word surviving in the continental languages, but displaced in English by black, also in Old English, in reference to skin color of persons. Oxford English Dictionary, Swathi, of a person's complexion, or skin color, or of a person with reference to their complexion, dark in color, brown, olive colored, or tanned, dark skin, of a person's complexion or skin color, or of a person, dark in color or tone, black or blackish. Swabi Black, Swabi Egypt, Swabi Dark Color, Swabiest White Person, Musty, Mulatto, Moor, Darkest Indian, A Queen with Swabi Cheeks and Bold Black Eyes, Swabi Complexion, Swabi Italian. Musty, mulatto, more, darkest Indian. Queen Elizabeth I of the Tudor dynasty of England was of Israelite ancestry, and she also had a dark complexion, which she used to cover up using chemicals to whiten her skin. One of the chemicals that she used was called Venetian Ceruse, Venetian Ceruse or Venetian White, also known as Blanc de Ceruse de Venice, and Spirits of Saturn. And it was a 16th century cosmetic used as a skin whitener. It was in great demand and considered the best available at the time, supposedly containing the best quality white lead sourced from Venice, the global merchant capital at the time. Venetian Ceruse was basically made in Venice, and it was in great demand because all these aristocrats in Europe, England, Germany, Poland, Russia, Italy, France, they all had dark complexions and they were trying to cover up their complexion to fit more into the general population of Europe at the time. So this skin whitener was in great demand among royalty and the nobility of Europe, who were of Israelite descent. A recipe from 1688 described the cosmetic as a mixture of water, vinegar, and lead. The cosmetic's use of white lead as a pigment was detrimental to the human body and caused lead poisoning, skin damage, hair loss, and in some cases, eventually death. 
users, Venetian Sarus was the most expensive and highly sought after form of Sarus, making it almost exclusive to high status individuals, the elite, or the wealthy class. It was favored by the European aristocracy due to its high quality. And most notably, Onetian Sarus was thought to have been used quite frequently by Queen Elizabeth I of England. High status individuals, the wealthy class, and the European aristocracy was trying to cover up their dark complexions. It was thought that Queen Elizabeth I, her death may have been caused by chronic lead poisoning and the combined use of other dangerous chemicals present in her cosmetics, such as mercury and arsenic. Sarus was also blamed for the death of an 18th century London socialite, Maria Coventry, Countess of Coventry. In 1760, Coventry had been a frequent user of Sarus and is believed to have died of lead poisoning at age 27 as a result of her faithful use of the cosmetic product. The general public refer to her death as death by vanity. Another devout user of Venetian Sarus was Isabella d'Esti, whose appearance demonstrated how Sarus caused permanent damage and premature aging. In 1534, an account of by Pietro Aretino described her smeared face as dishonestly ugly and even more dishonestly made up. As the middle class and commoners gained more power in Europe, they started to criticize the ruling class more and more, including their physical characteristics, such as skin color or were they attractive or not. So the aristocrats and wealthy class was trying their best to stay popular to the commoners. Although Venetian Sarus was certainly predominantly used by women, it was also thought to have been used by some men in royalty during the 16th century. A light skin complexion was sought after by men as it became a symbol of aristocracy. So the royals, the men, the aristocracy, the men also sought to cover up their dark complexions. They was hiding their true physical appearance from the common man. The men also were using skin whiteners. The aristocracy, the royalty, those men, not the commoners, the aristocracy. Maria Comfortry, Countess of Comfortry. Maria Comfortry, Countess of Comfortry. Born August 15, 1732, died September 30th, 1760, was a famous Irish beauty and London society hostess. During the reign of King George II, she died at a young age due to lead and mercury poisoning from toxins in her beauty regimen. She, she was using Phoenician Sarus to whiten her skin, but it had very toxic effects on her health. 
Maria Comfitry, Countess of Comfitry, was a famous Irish beauty and London society hostess. During the reign of King George II, she died at a young age due to lead and mercury poisoning from toxins in her beauty regimen. She was one of these dark complexion Europeans who ancestry went back to darker complexion Israelites. And she developed lead poisoning because of the use of Venetian ceruse. Another one of these wealthy class women who use of Venetian ceruse had a negative effect on their health was Isabella de Esti. Isabella de Esti, born May 19, 1474, died February 13, 1539, was the Marchioness of Mantua and one of the leading women of the Italian Renaissance as a major cultural and political figure. She was a patron of the arts, as well as the leader of fashion and in her innovative style of dressing was emulated by many women. The poet Aristo labeled her as the liberal and magnanimous Isabella, while author Matteo Bandello described her as supreme among women. And diplomat Niccolo da Corrego went even further by hailing her as the first lady of the world. Her husband was Francisco II Gonzaga of the Gonzaga family. Once again, another devout user of Venetian Sarus was Isabella de SD, whose apparent demonstrated how Sarus caused permanent damage and premature aging. In 1534, an account by Pietro Aretino described her smeared face as dishonestly ugly and even more dishonestly made up. She covered her dark complexion with this chemicals that made her parents white. So she was considered dishonestly made Ludovico Il Moro was Isabella's brother-in-law. He was a member of the wealthy aristocratic class in Europe who was of Israelite ancestry. Ludovico Sforza of the famous Sforza family. Ludovico Maria Sforza, born 27th of July, 1452, died May 27th, 1508, was also known as Lovico il Moro, il Moro being the Moor. And he was called the arbitrator of Italy and was an Italian nobleman who ruled as the Duke of Milan from 1494 to 1499. Lovico Sforza, the Moor. Skin whitening in Europe held toxic effects. Skin whitening practices have been documented in ancient Greece and Rome. Bleaching cosmetics often incorporated white lead carbonate and mercury as lightening agents. These products were ultimately known to cause skin erosion. Skin whitening was frequently documented during the Elizabethan era or the time of Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth's own usage of skin whiteners became a prominent standard of beauty. Additionally, according to medieval historians, Light skin 
was an indicator of aristocracy and higher socioeconomic class. As laborers were most frequently exposed to outdoor sunlight, men and women lightened their skin superficially and chemically using white powder and Venetian ceruse, respectively. In actuality, the aristocracy had dark complexions due to their ancestry of being Jews and Israelites. They use skin whiteners to conceal their dark complexion. Men and women lighten their skin superficially and chemically using white powder and Venetian ceruse respectively. Venetian ceruse consisted of a lead and vinegar mixture known to cause hair loss skin corrosion, muscle paralysis, tooth deterioration, blindness, and premature aging. Lye and ammonia found in other skin whiteners compounded the toxic effect of lead. Other practices done in the name of skin whitening included washing one's face and urine, and ingesting wafers of arsenic. Skin whitening in Europe had toxic effects. The aristocracy of Europe, they inherited dark complexions from their ancient Hebrew Israelite forefathers and foremothers. According to Pictorial Bible Dictionary, The ancient Hebrews were known to have dark complexion or dark skins. According to the entry Ruddy, it reads Ruddy, a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. The Hebrews, the ancient Hebrews, were dark skin, dark skin of the Hebrews and the aristocracy. Of Europe had dark skin because they were the children of the ancient Hebrews. But fortunately for the ancient Israelites, the Most High made the ancient Israelites very diverse. So they had Hebrews with dark skin, but also with light complexions. The Israelites came in all different colors. But they were known famous for having dark skin.